This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast. Thursday, December the 16th today, 24 hours after the Premier of Ontario. So we're not going to get shut down. No, he was. He did say that. He doesn't believe going into lockdown again is beneficial. We're all getting boosters. Mm-hmm. And you want tickets to a hockey game? Not so fast, slugger. Capacity limits have been instituted. We'll talk about that in the uh, podcast coming up this morning. But you got your home test kits for the kids yesterday. We did. I spent a little bit of time with that because I, as a parent who throughout the pandemic have been grateful every single day that I did not have children in school Young throughout this chil- pandemic. Younger yeah. children, yeah. I don't know how I would have handled that. <laughs> Comes this bringing home antigen test, which is, not, well, while well, not controversial necessarily, has sparked some discussion on on the significance of it and even like what it would be available. But it is just a test. It is. It's it's a box. It comes with five tests in it. Each child was sent home with one, which I wasn't sure would happen either because I will say prior to this, um, now not to say that it didn't go out, I didn't see anything from the school. So no notes came home saying it was going to happen. Okay, but right, it, but hearing it in the news and because... <laughs> I'm a parent. I may have missed it. I will admit that. So I wasn't sure if it would be one kit per family or if it would be for individual children. But we got two. Okay. So we have two kits now at home. Um, I was surprised a little bit by two things. Number one, the excitement my kids had for having them (laughs) because they came home and they're like, Mom, guess what I have? That's amazing. And I do. So clearly they have been talking about it in school. And I will give teachers the credit that they have explained this to the kids because they knew. They knew what they were, and they made a point of bringing it to my attention that we had them. So they both came out of the bags, and now they're up on the shelf. The second thing was how relieved I was at having them. That feeling of, okay, we're good. We are good for the holidays. We have these tests. Mm -hmm. (sighs) We can breathe a little bit. Now, what do the instructions say? Um. We got two sets of instructions. So the tests themselves came with a piece of paper explaining how to administer the tests and what to do. Right. And that's when I heard from the school because the school then sent out a reminder that they were coming. They sent out videos, how to use them, instructions, how to use them, and then a letter from the school itself explaining the tests. And this kind of, I think, ties into what you're saying. So in that letter, it was um, expressed that they are voluntary they're not mandatory. Right. If we choose to do them, they do ask that you do them uh, every three to four days to stay consistent. Okay. They point out that they do need to be done or they should be done when a child is asymptomatic. So as soon as you, I guess, become suspicious or even think, oh, maybe they were around someone or there's the potential, like if you were going to see family mm-hmm. and you thought, oh, okay, maybe we should do a test. Runny knows it's not stopping. Exactly. Little we'll, things here we'll and a bit a of a cough. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you do the test and then you go and get, if if it comes back positive, right. then you go for confirmation. Yeah. So then you'll have to go for another test. So this is just the at-home test for peace of mind more than right. anything. And and you said it's not mandatory. So, for example, if you choose to say, well, and how many did you get? How many is in the kit? Five? five I believe, So, yeah, yes. if you wanted to do it every three days over the two weeks, there's mm-hmm. five. So, that, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Or if you just wanted to wait if, if the kids mm-hmm. got sick. If they weren't sick, why use them? Exactly. But and you, and I'll be have... honest, we were, we're kind of the thing. We're not planning on traveling over Christmas. We're staying within our bubble, mm-hmm. our home base, mm-hmm. and seeing family we've seen all along. And so, it's kind of... Our thinking is, unless we have a reason to use them, we we won't. We won't. But they're nice to have. That's what I mean. The relief of having them, of but I knowing. Mean, you're not going to send even, them back, though, at the end of, no, I, I no, keep those puppies. I, I am. You because, got them. Because, yeah, if, if the runny nose does start, or myself, if I start to think, oh, maybe right. I'm starting to feel a little off, uh-huh. just a little swap. and. Mm-hmm. Because, again, it's only a test, and we got a text from a listener this morning. It's a preliminary test. That's right. And you equated it to a home pregnancy test. Yes, because that's, we did. We that's did. so smart. That's such a great way. I wish I had looked at that before I read the text, <laughs> and it kind of it set you. me off. Yeah. Because on the piece of paper that accompanies it, uh, the individual had highlighted the line that it says that these rapid test kits are intended by trained healthcare professionals. Yes. Intended for. 
Well, of course they are. So are needles and people also administer their own diabetes medication. Mm -hmm. My wife has EpiPen styles. Yes, those are intended. But again, this is a test. The children are not inoculating themselves. It's not for the vaccine. So it bothered me that all of a sudden there was this, in my mind, one person, okay, granted, backlash Mm -hmm. on these kids going home that in my head makes that sound that goes, you know, it's like, oh, why are they doing that? We're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe. It's not the be all and end all. It's just the gateway to maybe there's a problem. Let's let the professionals then take over. Mm -hmm. And that's all these were intended to do. And then when I saw the test, it's like, boy, it's like we, it's like people just don't want anything to go right. No. And it is very much like a pregnancy test. If you think you're pregnant, Mm -hmm. you get a test to maybe confirm or... Oh, no, it doesn't. And even still, you may still want to seek out a doctor if it comes back negative, just to be sure. And if it comes back positive, of course you go see a doctor. And it's the same with these. these. If if you suspect you came in contact with someone or there's the chance that you might have COVID, you take this as a preliminary. If it comes back positive, then you go get it confirmed. You go have a trained medical professional do the test, mm-hmm. and then you know for sure. And if it comes back negative and you still suspect, then you go and book a test, and you can do it that way You're through a medical professional. Because I don't see pick, people picketing in front of Shoppers Drug Mart to eliminate pregnancy, home pregnancy tests. <laughs> right? Because that's all it is. It's just a home test it's to see, and test. then you go to a health professional. What's the difference between then having these and, and quote unquote, clogging up the healthcare system mm-hmm. if, if you don't have it, if there is a way at home to just check and eliminate check. 99% of the stress of people worrying whether they might have yeah. it, and then to get a text from somebody with, Ugh. it's like, that's just got to stop. It's got to stop. It's too deep into it. We are, we're disappointed that Christmas can't be the way it is. And now with large gatherings, they're limiting it or strong suggesting 10 people. Is that fair? From the yes, unit? it does say 10, ten people. people. All right. But even in the letter home, if, if they're highlighting parts, it says here, while providing students with the rapid antigen screening kits is an important tool for managing the spread of COVID-19, vaccination remains the most effective protection blow. And it, it continues on. Right. So this is just a tool exactly. to help them and to help the, the, the general population just have a better idea where they're at but and we're to gonna, protect them. We're going to skip all of that and go right to this one line yes. at the bottom I know. to justify why none of this is going to work. Mm-hmm. And it's that kind of thinking to me, this is me on our podcast, <laughs> that says this is why we're dealing with it at Christmas in 2021 I know. and why it wasn't over before then. And it's just, it's got to stop. Yep. Do, anyway. It really does. So, and it's just, it's a way that the schools can help but i'm glad to hear you didn't shut the schools down i told you before oh. i was oh, shocked I think, because i, think I really he knows. thought i didn't want it to <laughs> but you know a conservative principle of government is that those who are being ruled are ruled by those closest to them in government so the people that would locally here make decisions about schools should be the local school board that's it shouldn't be the premier shouldn't be the the health minister or it should be a school board and he seems content to let that happen. Well, and, it, and I give him credit for that. I think that was one of the biggest frustrations last year because our numbers were really low. And for this area last spring, we were really good. We were very fortunate in Hastings as well as Northumberland to have um, very few cases, especially in the schools. But yet somehow we couldn't send our kids to school. Mm-hmm. And that was the frustrating part. Most of the numbers, most of the cases were coming out of Toronto, out of the greater Toronto area. And yes, to, to close those schools and to have them at home online learning made sense, but here it didn't. And yes, very much so. What we've seen recently with, okay, there's a case in a school. Well, we're going to close that school. That school, right. For two weeks. Right. Uh, there's another one over here. Okay, we're going to close that school for two weeks. I, it, I like that. Yep. That seems a lot, a, a better way of doing things than just a blanket closure. And 12 months ago, we didn't have the vaccination. Yep. So now that we have the vaccination, we can identify hotspots or breakout areas, be it places like we heard Campbellford Memorial Hospital. Mm-hmm. But now that's Which called off. Lifted. So that's mm-hmm. been, we didn't close every hospital in the province. Oh, no. Again, so we've gotten yeah. down to the idea, you know what? We can just find that little breakout hotspot. Mm-hmm. But because of so many people vaccinated, if we can just keep isolating it, 
but then increase the number of vaccinations and the fewer number of breakout spots, we can get ahead of it because we don't really sure what, mm-hmm. what Omicron is going to do yet. But um, And then, of course, there's a large area. So the uh, Belleville Senators hockey team, if 4,400 is the capacity at the CAA arena for the game against Providence on Saturday night, and that sounded like a fun family thing to do <laughs> now that the kids are done school tomorrow, uh, 4,400 won't be getting in. It's 50% capacity across mm-hmm. the province on large events. That includes Toronto Maple Leafs, Ottawa Senators, our own Belleville Senators, Pierre Pete's, Kingston Gent, like whatever the capacity is, the 2,200. So as we are doing our podcast, they're working pretty hard on figuring out. Pivoting. 2,200 people, and they can't all sit shoulder to shoulder because that would defeat the purpose. Well, no, and you kept mentioning the season's ticket holders because, yeah, and quite often they will be a few of them in the same areas, like next mm-hmm. to each other or yeah. uh, above each other in the seating. And now, yeah, I would think they'd have, to, again, don't know for sure. But I would assume they'd have to spread them out. Yeah, and that's got to be because the easiest thing in the world is, okay, well, we'll just cap ticket sales at 2200 Well, what if they all sit on the same side of the arena? So that's <laughs> yeah, not all your bright. ticket, All your right. season's ticket holders are in this section. Yeah. That's not going to be, no, that's, <laughs> that's that not going to work. defeats the purpose. <laughs> exactly. so, so do you let season's ticket holders sit where they are and then only sell tickets two seats away in a row above and below everybody? Like they've got to do something in their computers mm-hmm. to make not just half, but half spread out safely. Well, and I know our theater, uh, the theater in Kelmelford, um, it's a co-op theater. It, they've already, they've done that. They, when they've opened, reopened this fall, that's how they were doing their seating even before yesterday. Mm. It, it was spaced out. So you yeah. would book your seats and it would be assigned seating. So you weren't sitting right next to someone or directly in front of someone or behind them, that you had space around you to remain socially distant yeah. in the theater, which I thought was amazing. Right. I thought that was great. I mean, we are well ahead of the planning than we were 12 months ago. 12 Certainly. months ago, we were yes. all devastated. The but pivoting believing, isn't as hard, I think. Right. Because we have infrastructure for that. We've mm-hmm. done it before. We didn't think we'd have to do it again. I did not believe that when 2021, when 2020's Christmas tree went away, yeah. that when I brought it out this year, it would be under the same conditions. And that's a huge disappointment for everybody. But I say that, and I'm going to see Spider-Man tonight. <laughs> and this is my first trip into a movie theater in two years. And it'll be interesting to hear what your experience is. Not yeah. just about the movie, because I'm very interested in how you feel yeah. about the movie. Yeah. Um, but the experience itself and how full will the theater be. Yeah. Because we haven't been to, I say we've gone to our, our local theater, a very small theater in Campbellford, but we haven't been to one of the bigger ones, one of the Galaxy yeah. Cinemas yet. And it wasn't my idea. My my son and I are spending the day together. This is dad and son Christmas shopping day. <laughs> You're it doing is, it early this year. It wow. It's the one day of the Actually, it's a little bit later. Normally, I like to do it around See, the 8th, you go the 9th, on the like it's Christmas Eve. You're out there doing yeah, the shopping. I, know, I, know. I like, to, <laughs> like to get that done. It uh, makes Mrs. Philbin a happier person, and that's all I live to do. I know. That's all I live to do. But what an experience. You're going to have, it's going to be interesting. He texted me. He said, you know, we're going to go shopping. We're going to get something to eat. He said, what do you think about, you know, going, going to, to see Spider-Man movie if, if tickets are available? And I said... So I, I talked to my wife. I said, how do you feel about me going into a movie theater in this environment? Mm-hmm. You know, but she knows I'm vaxxed. She knows I will mask. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, that'd be, that'd be a fun thing for you and your son to do. So it's like, nice. okay, we're going to do that. We're going to do it safely. I've got the tickets. I'm ready to go. But like, like you say, I'm, gonna, I'm not nervous about being there, but I am curious as to how it will work. But in my head, I know everybody will be vaccinated. So it is not like it was 12 months ago as far as no. the possible spreadability. Still possible to spread, but we're vaccinated. So I take that for what it is. So you do need proof of vaccination to go into the movie theater. To get him, yeah. And, uh, and it was his idea. It wasn't my idea. So it would be tough for me to say, no, I don't want to. Kath and I have decided we're not going to go into movie theaters for a while. That's just, you know, mm-hmm. now that we got Netflix and everything, we'll just watch, watch stuff at, at home. home. Um, but when he had said that, I said, you know what, maybe I'll go. I'll go. I'll well, take a look. good for you. Yeah. So. I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how comfort- how quickly you feel comfortable, but at the same time, it'll always be in the back of your head. Yeah. Like you're, you're aware of it, mm-hmm. but I think I've it'll be a, okay. I've, I've eaten in restaurants throughout yep. the pandemic, done all and of that. And you take your mask off in restaurants. Yep. Going to church, been in a church, separate, mm-hmm. you know, distanced, uh, lots of other places inside. But not like I've gone to hockey games, mm-hmm. the CA Arena, I've seen the Belleville Sun. Mm-hmm. Yep, socially distant, masks, 
So it's not like I haven't been in a group setting. The movie theater, I guess, is just a little bit different. So I'll be interested to see what that's what that's going to be like. And I know the movie will be fabulous. Yeah, I know. Jimmy Hollywood said you got to see it on the big screen. Don't me keep texting you throughout the movie. No, I'm I don't want Tommy you to tell texter. me anything about it okay. tomorrow, except that you love it. That, okay. You can say that to me, and nothing else, because yes, I I plan on seeing it over the holidays, as long as everything remains as is, yep. status quo at the yep. moment. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. So don't. Yeah, I don't want you to give anything away. Even though I'll be dying. I will be dying inside tomorrow. Charity? <laughs> Do I have to love it? Yes. You will. You will love it. Because it'll be a fun movie. I expect to love it. Yeah. It's Marvel. You'll. Yeah. It'll just be a fun movie. Um, Infinity War is one of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. See? So and that's what I'm expecting. So nothing less. 3D, Infinity though. or Endgame? Infinity, the first one. Infinity War. That what really? Mm-hmm. See, Endgame, that one scene gets no, me, I, it still gets me every time. Every time. My wife watched Endgame on the weekend on Disney Plus because she doesn't remember seeing it. And I know what she means because after a while, they're all kind of the same. When I, like the Avengers, well, there were so many plot twists. It's like, have I seen this one? Because part of it I remember. I said, no, I know exactly what you mean. You sound like Gwyneth Paltrow, and she was in the movie. Exactly. Because she'll be exactly. asked things, and she's like, I wasn't in that movie. And they're like, uh, uh, yeah, you, you were. You kind of were. <laughs> and it's like, oh, that one, right. So which one was Avengers? Which one was Iron Man? Which yeah. one was uh, Black Panther, which because so much of, oh, there's so much of Endgame takes place at Wakanda, and it was like it was, was that in Black Panther. And now so you I, throw in Disney Plus, yeah. and they're, the, <laughs> they're the little there. vignettes, and it's like oh wow, oh, I don't know, it's it another know. world. But it we'll really know about is. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast here on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and through our social media sites. Uh, get all the details and everything we talked about from the actual news stories at inquinty.ca, and keep yourself safe. Tomorrow we'll have our Ask Me Anything portion, and then Charity and I are discussing whether we're going to do a Christmas Eve podcast in a week. So Sure we will. Okay, we're going to do a We could do a do best of. A 2-minute podcast <laughs> with my car on and my coat <laughs> as I'm out the door. That's not fair. I know that's not fair. Uh, anything that you'd ever like to uh, get involved in on the podcast, you can text us here at our studio 24 hours a day. Area code 613-962-0955. Just make a notice for the podcast, and we'll be happy to uh, to uh, discuss whatever it is you've got on and ask me anything or any other thoughts. We appreciate it. Have a great Thursday, okay? We'll talk to you tomorrow morning.